Roma Wines present... Suspense! Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salute! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you Miss Faye Bainter, Mr. Ralph Morgan, and Mr. Dane Clark in a suspense play dealing with a mother and a son and a lodger who kept an appointment with death. And so, with Life Ends at Midnight, and with the performances of Faye Bainter as Mrs. Bates, of Dane Clark as her son Walter, and of Ralph Morgan as Mr. Chalmers, we again hope to keep you in suspense. It's your little sonny boy, Waller. You still remember my whistle, eh? Oh, yes, I... But what I... I didn't... Uh, know Never that... know when I'll turn up, eh, Mom? What's the matter? Do we have to stand here in the hall? Oh, no, no. Come in. I... It's just... Come in, Walter. Well, it's the same old crummy joint. I do my best to keep it clean, Walter. Yeah, I know. A regular old mother hubbard. I'll have to clean up the whole south side before you get the magoo out of this flea bag. Oh... Boy, am I tired. Up all night in a stinking day coach full of snoring jerks and squalling babies. <laughs> babies are the worst. All they do is bawl and slobber. You left Pittsburgh last night? One in the morning. Didn't sleep a wink. Yeah, look at my collar. But tomorrow is Monday. You have to be at work in the morning. Sure, I... What's the matter? You worried? Oh, no, no. I, I just... Don't just. Can't a guy come home to see his mother once in six months? That's a mother for you. You break your back, you sit up all night to see your mother for one day, and she tells you you have to be at work in the morning. How do you like that? Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't miss you, so I just worried yeah, about... Yeah, 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 I know. Well, don't worry so much. It makes me nervous. Here, sit at the table, dear. You must be starved. Oh, all right. Now it's like coming home. Oh, my <laughs> baby. I'm so glad to see you. You did come just to see me, didn't you? Who else? Hattie Lamar? Well, of course you <laughs> came to see me. It's just that I always worry so about you, forget I mean. Forget it, forget it. Well, what's to eat? I was just making a chop for my lunch. That's all there seems to be in the house right uh, now. It'll be enough for me. It'll be ready in a minute. Now tell me about yourself, your job. Never mind about me. How are you doing? Well, I try not to complain, Walter. Things are not easy. Prices high. Rent's going up all the time, even on this old house. Honest, I don't know what I'm going to do if things don't... You uh, had some bonds Papa left you. You had about $2,000 bonds he left you. Still got well, to... I'm trying to tell you, Walter, things haven't been easy. And... Always the poor mouth. Every time I see her, she's putting on a poor mouth. I'm just saying things aren't easy. And for me, do you think it's a picnic? I got enough trouble, and for what? For what? All year I worked like crazy. For what? A man must work, Walter. A man must work, Walter. Ah. Yes, that's true. A man must work and live like a person, and not be afraid so that he can sleep without worrying about... About... About what? About a bell ringing at night, or a knock on the door in the morning, or someone touching you on the arm. Yes, it's a nice feeling and a free feeling to be able to walk down the street in the sun with your eyes meeting another man's without wondering if he's... Shut up, shut up! I ain't in trouble again, so stop mouthing at me. You're always mouthing at you me. You haven't... You know what the judge said the last time, Walter? He uh... was nice. Now he gave you another chance. He saw you were really a good boy, and he gave you another chance. He got you a nice job, and you promised to... You must... Oh, you're all right, Walter. You didn't... A uh, meatball. A herring on a plate all your life. You're a tomcat in the garbage. You find a fish head and you say, thank you, mister. You chew a fish good and you smile pretty. Well, not for me. You take a chance and you throw away the fish heads. You get one break and you're out of the garbage can for life. You throw a time clock's and shiny pants. You're in a higher brackets and nobody gets you. Yeah, you're a mister with a future. You hold your nose when you walk from the day coach to your compartment. You leave the stinks behind in a port of dusty air in front of you, and that's for me. 
One break. One break and you're as hot as a rocket shooting diamonds for sparks. Walter! You're a P-38 in a world full of flivers. A buck gets you two, two gets you four. Walter! Good for one blonde to kick her and a kisser. Walter! It's all right. I took another chance. I try to run it up. No dice. I gotta make it good. Tomorrow morning, I gotta make it good. The books at the office will show it, and I gotta make it good. How much? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars? By midnight tonight, fifteen hundred. If I miss that twelve twenty for Pittsburgh, it's all up. I, I, I might as well take gas. Fifteen hundred? By midnight tonight? Where am I gonna get it, Walter? The bonds. You got the bonds, Papa. The left. bonds. How do you think I got you out of the last trouble? Bribes, bail, paying back every dime. Where do you think I got I'll it? I'll get ten years. You heard the judge last time. What can I do? What? Ten what? years in stir. Ten years. There won't be no reform school oh, this time. Walter, oh, look, Walter. please. Please, Ma, please, get me the money. I'll get it for me. I'll be good. I'll work hard. I won't give you no more trouble. But help me now. Please, Mama, please. Will where you, can I get it, Walter? I've nothing left. <laughs> nothing. I don't care where you get it. It's your fault, and you got to help me. I only wanted to help you. Yes. Now I'm going to... Yes. It is my fault. I've always protected you, but I, I can't protect you anymore. I'll give you the few dollars I have. Go away. It'll be enough to help you run away. That's all I can do. You're holding out on me. You're worrying about your old age. You're making yourself a cushy little... Se- no. Oh. Oh, I, I, I'm i sorry. I, I hope I'm not intruding. Who? Who's this? Oh, Mr. Chalmers. This is Mr. Chalmers, Walter. He has the back bedroom. This... This is my son, Walter, Mr. Chalmers. How do you do, Mr. Bates? I feel that I know you very well. Your mother and I sit here in the kitchen sometimes over a cup of tea, and she talks about you for hours and hours. Yes, I can see why mother is so proud of you. How do you do, Mr. Bates? Yes, you're a fine-looking young man. Uh? Mrs. Bates, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to the corner for my paper. I think that little man with the tiny (laughs) moustache... You know who I mean, the insurance agent... I think he might call again to collect. Please tell him to go away. You will do that for me, Mrs. Bates. Yes, Mr. Chalmers. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Uh, tell him not to come back anymore. I don't want to pay any more on the policy. You remember I told you my nephew was very sick in Spokane? Yes, Mr. Chalmers. Well, the poor young man passed away. Yes. I was going to leave him a few dollars when I died. But now, well, I have no one left at all. And, well, a dollar a week... You'll tell that to the little man with the tiny moustache? Yes, Mr. Chalmers. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Good day, Mr. Bates. Walter, I have $40 in the house for the rent. You can take that. Drop me a card when you get settled someplace. Let me know where you are. I'll send you some more as soon as I can get it. Maybe later I'll be able to straighten it out. Maybe later I'll be able to speak to your boss. I'll promise to pay back every dime. But you must go away. You must... Uh... Tell me something about Mr. Chalmers. He interests me very strangely. Walter! Don't be so nervous, Ma. We got plenty of time. We got till midnight. Tonight for suspense, Roma Wines bring you as stars Faye Bainter, Ralph Morgan, and Dane Clark. You have heard them in the prologue to our suspense play this evening, Robert Tallman's story, Life Ends at Midnight. Before we return to the scene of our play, let us journey in fancy to Havana and sit at a table in the gay restaurant Paris. At the next table, we see perhaps a farewell party given for an American visitor. The American is wondering how he'll be able to repay in his own country the hospitality shown him in Cuba. Reassuringly, his Cuban host might remark, Es muy fácil, amigo. Just be sure to serve wonderful Roma wine. It is wine imported by us from your own country. Roma wine. Indeed, Americans can well be proud that judges of fine wines in so many lands now acclaim the wines of California among the world's most enjoyable of all time. Of these truly superb wines, Roma wines are especially honored by the number of countries now importing them for enjoyment as rare luxuries. But Roma wines are not lacking in honors bestowed them here in America, because Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. 
If you aren't already one of the millions enjoying Roma wines regularly, as a delicious beverage any time, to add sparkle to any meal, to smarten your entertaining, make your own taste test to choose your favorite, choosing from Roma Wine's many different wine types. When you learn their modest cost here in America, with no import duty to pay, no expensive shipping charges to absorb, you'll know why we say Roma Wines are for your daily enjoyment. I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Faye Beta, Ralph Morgan, and Dane Clark in Life Ends at Midnight, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Yes, I, I do think I'll have another cup, if you don't mind, Mrs. Bates. Now, Mr. Chalmers, suppose you look at it this way. You've been paying one buck a week for how many years now? Hmm, I'd say 20 years would be a conservative estimate. All right, 20 years. Now, let's see, that's uh, 50 bucks a year. Say, that's uh, 1,000 bucks you paid in, no? Yes, 1,000 bucks. This coffee cake, Mrs. Bates, is excellent. You like it? I made it yesterday. Forget when I... the coffee cake. Now, uh, let's uh, figure percentage. How many more years do you figure to live? Walter. Oh, that's well, all right, Mrs. Bates. After all, I'm an old man, and at my age, one rather, well, comes to terms with death. It's like the end of a long, busy day. Life ends at midnight, and a new day begins. Yes, Walter, I, I think you're on the verge of making a very profound observation. Ah, you see? My policy is for $2,500. And in the days that are left to me, I certainly will not be required to pay in as much as I have already paid That's out. That's the exact point. And if you drop it now, will you get anything back? No. You got a straight life with no cash in value. If you drop the policy now, the insurance company is the winner. But say you live another couple of years. You pay a couple of hundred more. And you leave the 2500 to somebody. Now... Which is a smart thing, I leave it to you. Yes, I, I should like to think that when I'm gone, I've left something behind for someone. Mr. Chalmers, oh yes, I'll always remember him for this. It's nice to live on in somebody's memory for a little while after we're dead. But A, I have no one in this world. And B, I must be very, very frank and tell you that I can no longer afford to pay even the dollar a week. You see, I live on a That's few... That's a problem of the most minor importance for anybody who invests in you now a buck a week would be guilt-edged. I mean, for instance, well, take my mother here. Now, suppose you made her the beneficiary. Now, suppose she continued to pay the buck a week. Who can lose on such a deal? Who can lose? Nobody. You get the point? Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't. Why? Why, it, it's... Why not? It's simple, huh? No, oh, no, Mr. Chalmers. No, you mustn't. Let Mr. Chalmers aside. How is the Chalmers? It makes good sense, no? Makes everybody happy, no? But we're practically strangers. We just... What do you mean, strangers? Who's a stranger in this world? We're just little people trying to make each other happy. Huh, Mr. Chalmers? Now, Mr. Chalmers here can die feeling he didn't waste a buck a week for 20 years, and he'll know he'll live in your memory. That's what he wants. Now, why shouldn't he have it? Ain't every man entitled to at least live in somebody's memory? Yes, but Mr. Chalmers doesn't have to do that. I'll think about him anyway. I, I promise I will... He, he don't Let have... him say something. You're always mouthing. Now, what do you say, Mr. Chalmers? Oh, that must be the little man with the tiny mustache. I'll tell him I'm keeping the policy and changing the beneficiary. Oh, uh, could you let me have the loan of a dollar, Mr. Bates? <laughs> Hurry it up, will you? The old man's coming home in a minute or two. He takes a snap about this time. I want this ready for no, him. Oh, relax, sonny. Relax. I can't finish this job today. What are you giving me? It'll take a joint and another length of pie. Oh, fix it up. You're a good plumber. You can fix it up for now. Man, yeah, the room's pretty small. Oh. Why do you want the heater so close to the bed for him? Like I told you, he's got rheumatism. He needs plenty of heat. Well... I can run a rubber extension, but with gas, I don't like okay, it. Okay, so with gas, you don't like it, but with gas, we gotta run this heater. The old man's got rheumatics. He can take plenty of gas. Huh? Uh, heat, I mean. He needs plenty. What are you doing now? Tightening this giant. Look, it's tight enough. Here's your three bucks, and 
Okay. Okay, you're the boss. Bring your tools the next time. I won't be any next time, Sonny. What do you give me now? You can get somebody else to do your dirty work after this. So long, Skippy. Skippy? <laughs> well, come on, Skippy. Pull yourself together. We got work to do. Hiya, Pop. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, yeah, this used to be my room. The steam don't come up here so good, so I talked the old lady into fixing this up for you. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, Walter. Thanks. I stuffed up the cracks in the window, too. Zero weather. It gets plenty of drafty in this room. You thought of everything, didn't you, Walter? Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it ought to work out just fine. It'll do the job, I think. I, uh, I'm going to take a little nap before dinner. Uh, do you think the heat... Ah, uh, just leave it on. I'll look in after a bit to see if it's okay. Well, now, you needn't go to all that trouble. No, it's no trouble at all, Mr. Chalmers. When I do a thing, I like to do it right. Oh. Well, who's there? Is that you, Walter? Yeah, go on back to sleep, Pop. Oh. I'm just turning the heater off. It's getting stuffy in here. Oh, you're a good, considerate boy, Walter. Oh, I skip it. Go <sighs> on, go on back to sleep. Walk so fast, Walter. My feet are hurting me again. You can buy new shoes tomorrow. I'd like to know what with. Maybe you'll have dough tomorrow. Maybe we'll both have some dough. If a miracle happened. Eh, maybe miracles do happen. Maybe if you're smart. Where are you taking me to, Walter? Nowhere in particular. I thought we'd stroll around the old neighborhood. I like old times. Oh, that's a nice idea, Walter. But my well, feet... Hello, Mrs. Bates. Good evening, Officer Flanagan. This is my son, Walter. He's just here from Pittsburgh. Well, glad to know you. How's business, copper? Oh, much the same. Vagrancy, petty larceny, once in a while, suicide. Suicide? Yeah, that's what they start out to do, but it's harder to get bumped off than most people think. Huh? Case just last week over in the next precinct. Dame turned on the gas in her room and lay down on the bed. What happened? Nothing. They always bungle somewhere, amateurs. Gas petered out. She forgot to put a quarter in the meter. <laughs> Ah, uh, seven o'clock. Uh, I got a call in. Well, good night, Mr. Good, Bates. Good night, officer. Nice to meet you, Walter. Ma. Yes, Walter. When did you put a quarter in the meter at home? Why, well, I, I don't remember. Goodness, I'd better get some change. Never mind a change. Come on. Walter, why did you ask about the gas meter? What do you think? Walter, you didn't. That isn't why you put the heater in, Mr. Chalmers. What do you think? I don't think anything. I just pray, pray that quarter ran Save out before. Save your prayers. If that didn't work, I'll try another way. Either that old clerk is dead before midnight or I spent ten years in stir. He's going to be dead before midnight, see? And if you try to make any trouble, you'll be pushing daisies right along with him. <laughs> Stop sniveling. We're going in there now. Now, look, if it took, scream your head off or I'll give you a reason to scream. Gas. I can smell it. Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> oh, I... Oh, well, good evening, Walter and Mrs. Bates. I was just on my way out. Oh, Mr. Chalmers, you're all right. You're all right. Of course he's all right. What's eating you? I have a slight headache, it's true. But a brisk walk in the open air will cure that, I'm sure. Hey, hey will you look at this? What is it, Walter? Well, it's hose on a heater. Huh. It got unhitched. No wonder you got a headache. I thought I smelled gas. Boy, it's lucky for you and Ma forgot to put a quarter in the meter. Providence works in strange ways, doesn't it, Walter? Well, I must be getting on. I'll be coming home rather late, Mrs. Bates, so I'll just let myself in. Uh, how late? Well, I, I thought I'd stop at the neighborhood picture house for dinner. That'll be around 9 o'clock. So I imagine I won't be home much before 11. Mr. Chalmers, there's something I've wanted yes, to... Yes, Mrs. Bates. Walter's a good boy at heart, you know, but... 
He's been in some trouble lately, and... Is there anything I can do to help, Walter? Yeah, plenty. I'll tell you all about it when you get up. You get back. Come on, you better run along now, Mr. Chalmers. You don't want to be late for that picture. Yes, yes, of course. Well, good night, Mrs. Bates. Mr. Chalmers, I... Good night, Mr. Chalmers. Yes, good night. Oh, Walter, I... Walter! Walter, no! No, no, my book, no! You were going to tell him, weren't you? You'd like to send me to the chair, wouldn't you? Can you struck me, Walter? You struck your own mother. I ought to have messed up your sad monkey face for good. Oh, it's no, your fault I pulled this up in the first place. Why didn't you remember to put a quarter on that meter? Why didn't you? I'm glad I forgot. He wouldn't be alive. I, I shouldn't have messed around with gas trying to spare your feelings, oh. making you look like an accident. Oh, no. The thanks I get for it. She wants to blab the whole oh. thing. Turn me in, my own mother. No, no, Walter. No, no, that's not true. Why, you... But don't strike me again, Walter. I can't stand okay. it. Okay. Maybe now you'll cooperate. Now, look, let's put it this way. It's either you or him. If it's you, I don't care whether they get me or not. Are you listening? Oh, yes, yes, Walter. Okay, now, like I said, I got very little time to get this thing done. I ought to have done it neat and clean in the first place, like I said. He's old and weak. You just push him over on a bed, hold a pillow over his face for a few minutes, and the job's done. Nobody will ask any questions a guy that old. Walter, for the last time, I'm begging. Okay, make sure it's for the last time. Remember, it's you or him, like I said. What are you going to do? Now, look. I'll be waiting in his room when he comes home. I'm shot anyway, so I'll lay down and get 40 winks. You wait up for him. Tell him I've left to catch a train. That's in case he suspects anything. And when he comes to his room, I'll take care of the rest of it. How do you know I won't warn him? Because it's him or you, like I told you. I don't think you'll warn Mr. Chalmers. And don't try to stall him when he comes in. He's got to be dead by midnight. Or else. Mr. Chalmers. Evening, Joe. I'll have the late edition of the Daily News, as usual. Oh, I saved one out for you, Mr. Chalmers. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Joe. Good night. Where does the oh, 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 by the way, Joe, I, I, I almost forgot. Can you give me the change of a dollar? Oh, sure, Mr. Chalmers. Yes, here you are. Fifty, seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety, and one dollar. Well, thank you. I just happened to think of something I need change for. A little good deed for a friend of mine. Thomas. Well, I didn't think you'd be up so late, Mrs. Bates. I waited up especially. I wanted to talk to you about Walter. Mrs. Bates, your eye, it's all discolored. Yes, I... The light burned out in the bathroom, and when I went to replace it in the dark, that is, I bumped into the door. Now, I would have thought Walter would have done that for oh, you. Oh, no, Walter didn't... I mean... Walter's left already. He had to catch the 12.20 for Pittsburgh, you know. But it's only 11 now, the clock. Perhaps he had some things to do on the way, I mean. Of course. Well, I'm afraid I must be getting on to bed. No, not just yet. I mean, won't you sit down for a minute and have a cup of tea with me? Well, I'd like to, but tea keeps me awake, Mrs. Bates. I'll be getting long to my room now, if you don't mind. no. No, don't go into that room, Mr. Chalmers. Why, Mrs. Bates, whatever's the trouble? My son, Walter, there's something I must tell you. Forgive me, Mrs. Bates, but I'm an old man and I need my rest. If it could possibly wait until morning... No, 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 it, it can't wait until morning. It's got to be told before midnight. What was that? It sounds like someone moving about in the back of the house. It, one of the shutters. It's loose. The wind. Oh, you were saying, Mrs. Bates? Nothing. I can't tell you, after all. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to tell it. Afraid. There, there, Mrs. Bates. Perhaps in the morning. Try to get some rest. You're, you're going in there now? I think that will be the best thing to do all the way around. Don't you, Mrs. Bates? Good night. No. No, wait. Mrs. Bates, I... What is it, Mrs. Bates? 
That smell. Gas. Walter. Walter. Walter! Why don't you lie down for a few minutes, Mrs. Bates? I'll call you when the ambulance arrives. Listen. It's striking twelve. Dead before midnight. That's what he said. Dead before midnight. Poor lad. Fell asleep. If only I hadn't remembered to go back for that change. You did it. <laughs> you put the quarter in the meter. That's what turned on the gas that killed him. Well, you mentioned the gas having gone off and forgetting to put a quarter in the meter. So on the way to the picture house, I just went around to the back entry and dropped the coin. I suppose I should have remembered about the connection being loose on the heater in my room. But I wanted to surprise you with my good deed. I didn't mean to do anything wrong, Mrs. Bates. Truly, I didn't. No. You didn't do anything wrong, Mr. Chalmers. You didn't do anything wrong. And so closes Life Ends at Midnight, starring Faye Bainter, Ralph Morgan, and Dane Clark. Tonight's tale of suspense. Miss Bainter appeared by courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Madame Curie. Dane Clark is currently being seen in the Warner Brothers production, Destination Tokyo. Before Ralph Morgan returns to our microphone, let me give you a suggestion. A suggestion you will find can add to the success of your next dinner party at home. At one end of the dining table, place a bottle of Roma Wines Not Sweet, Not Dry Burgundy. At the other table end, place a bottle of Roma Wines Delicately Delicious Sauterne. Then, let each of your guests select the Roma Wine to his liking. You'll know that whatever the individual choice of a guest, both of these Roma California Wines will delight by their superb quality. The quality that has made Roma Wines America's largest selling wines. Whichever of Roma Wine's many different California wine types you choose at your dealers, the small purchase price he asks will surprise and delight you, while the superb quality of these good Roma Wines will win your full accord with the judgment of wine experts of many lands that Roma Wines are truly magnificent. Let me repeat the name. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Ralph Morgan. First, I'm sure I speak for all of us, Miss Bainter, Mr. Clark, and myself, in saying how much we've enjoyed appearing on Suspense this evening. We will all be listening, as we hope you will, next week when Miss Agnes Moorhead is your star in one of the most talked-about plays ever to be presented in this, this series, called Sorry, Wrong Number. And now, one more word. Here's something our fighting men may never forget. The price of victory is sacrifice. You help bring the victory nearer when you make the sacrifices that make it possible for you to buy more war bonds. Thank you. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Don't forget then next Monday for Agnes Moorhead in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.